Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Green Zero and I'm back here once again with another Command & Conquer 3 Kings Wrath video commentary. I hope you'll enjoy that FPV VOD that I put out there. It's strange because I'm a GDI player and I put a Black Hand uh, game up there. Anyway, that's because I couldn't find a replay. But enough about that, that was just for a bit of fun. And uh, remember to stay tuned to my channel, something very special coming up uh, right uh, after this video very soon. Stay tuned, you're going to want to see a big uh, event happening there. Anyway, let's uh, have a look who we got here. We're on Tournament Rift and it looks like it's a random v random here. We have, uh, we have, what do we have, who do we have? We have Ipow New, he's playing over this side here. He has dealt uh, GDI, this is, is random v random. He's going to go for one spike, he sends out four squads. Well, no, three squads. No, four squads, there we go. And he's going to find this screen unit up here, which means our opponent over here, uh, Excess Chronic, which is, of course, Cyberstorm. And he manages to kill that squad there. Nice work there. The buzzers shouldn't really win in that situation, but uh, Raider was obviously having a to move around all these other scouts at the exact same time. And uh, I'm going to call him Raider because, you know, that was his main account before. I don't know if he's played more games on High Power New. But uh, he, yeah, it's random to be random. He's dealt GDI. Cyberstorm here has dealt a Scrin Faction. And he's going to make himself a nuisance. And he does... Oh, he just loses his squad there. Looks like Raider's going to be victorious. But, I mean, random to be random. No side's really going to risk spikage unless they're Black Hand or Traveller. We can clearly see that uh, Cyberstorm is Reaper, so that's a bit iffy, you know. Does he go for the spikes? What if his opponent's Black Hand or another screen player? That's going to be hard. Was GDI, so he probably could have taken him if he wanted to, but of course, he doesn't know that. And I mean, uh, Raider being GDI and not knowing what his uh, his opponent is, uh, can't obviously uh, hope to predict what's going to be down there at those spikes there. So anyway, we have uh, three Harvesters here. We've got the Power Plant coming up here for Raider. He's going for an expansion. So Reaper versus GDI. So actually should be pretty good, they're both very powerful on the ground. Um, no, more notably Reaper, in fact, I think Reaper's got the advantage until perhaps uh, the, the very... Um, oh, I mean, they, once they get those dev tanks out, they can kite with those dev tanks against the Preds and it gets really hard. Plus Shard Walkers to take out any kind of Orca support, which is what GDI need against those devs unless they really manage to mass up. I think it's, it's up to both players here to hit the other first. Whoever hits first will probably have the advantage, assuming everything goes down nicely for that player. And we have Raider going for the safe expansion here. I'm not sure if he got a scout off in his base. I can't see any scouts anywhere. Uh, he's chasing these buzzers down over here. Cyber's trying to get away. He should be able to outrun those guys. Unless he gets trapped. Oh, look at this. He's hiding behind the mountain here, but I don't think he has enough health. And Raider's going to go around and kill him. There we go. That was nice work there to use those uh, to his advantage. What you can do, if, especially if you're against like, other GDIs or nods, you can actually uh, say uh, Raider was against a GDI player, he could uh, build his foxhole here behind uh, the uh, the volcano and then the infantry would have to come around it to engage it and that would bring them in range because normally rockets uh, outrange the foxhole so you just don't want to, you know, that, that kind of sucks. I think in the foxholes the, the riflemen should be able to range rockets but uh, I don't know, what's the general consensus on that? I just I just feel you put the, the foxhole up there and it's only really good just to you know delay uh, their, their, them getting cleaned up and uh, sometimes it helps you out. Sometimes when you're attacking the enemy base and you have a rifle, they just dig all these foxholes and it just becomes a pain because they're trying to defend with infantry and they got these foxholes everywhere. A few Seeker tanks out. So not sure what he's going to be doing with those just for some early game defense here. But really, I would have thought Cyber would want to have pressed his uh, his somewhat slight advantage in the early game here. But it looks like Peoples are coming out. Those Peoples aren't going to be able to take those Seekers. There's five of them there. That's a nice strike force. And they're going to see the Peoples. They should be able to pick off one. And here we go, chasing one down. There we go, immediately killing. He might even get a second one if he can get on heavy damage. Well, yes, he's going to knock off two. I don't think you should chase them back now because there's only two peoples there. They're not going to do anything against this. Sh yeah, look at that. He's going to turn around. And jeez. you got enough harvesters there, Cyber. Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Why have you got seven harvesters? You're just going to have them lining up. He should send some to the blue and some down here. He's really, really echoing hard here. And what was that? Raffin Squad getting cleaned up. The Seeker Hit Squad not really doing much. Double War Factory Preds coming out. And oh, Raider. He just sold off one of his uh, refineries. That was a little premature. I don't think he's still got... He's got a ton of harvesters as well. Look how many harvesters these guys are building. They're just massing harvesters. It's going to be a huge, huge fight in this game here. The first engagement is going to be... Well, I mean, we've already seen uh, small engagements. But the first major engagement is going to be massive, I reckon. Because they've just spent... So much money on harvesters. Look how many harvesters Raiders got. He's got six down here. Seven, eight, nine. And probably a tenth one going to the blue. No. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, he's got nine harvesters. Cyber has three. 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's got ten, and no one sent any harvesters to the blue. I don't get it why they built so many harvesters, and there is going to be an engagement down here. The Predator tanks moving forward, but they are going to find those Seeger tanks. And Cyberstorm's like, see you later. Uh, a little bit of a quote from Force there. He does StarCraft too. Yes, I do watch him sometimes. Um, but uh, these Seekers, oh man, I don't think he has enough to defend that off. Where are his Preds? Their Preds are turning around. They're like, hey, we got to get back and defend our base. We can't base trade quite yet. I know that Raider's a bit of a big fan of uh, base trading. Uh, but really, if you're going to base trade, you've got to be so careful, man. You've got to be like, oh, can I actually win this base trade? Uh, nice drink. It's pretty hot today, so I've got my drink right here. Anyway, it looks like Cyber, he's got these two Shard Walkers here. What's he going to do? He's going to, I think, uh, he could probably destroy the War Factory. Raiders being forced back. No counter-aggression against Cyber. He's really hitting those Seeker tanks, and he's going for double upgrades from his Nerf Center and his, uh, what do you call it, Technology Center. So he's going to go for the Shards and the Shields, I reckon. I couldn't imagine it being Blue Shard. It's going to be uh, Shard Launchers, and Sonic Emitter is up, and that's going to really hurt these guys. You can see that uh, Cyber's just trying to go around this, uh, what do you call it, this uh, Sonic Minute, and that's a good idea, man. Like, it takes 20 seconds for Raider to place these, and he can just go around them. He's even going to get this power plant, that may knock him low on power. He doesn't quite finish it off. Yes, there we go. And low on power, these turrets aren't going to do anything. They don't even have AP ammo, they're not going to be able to touch these, but the Predator tank's coming through. He should be able to clean this force up, but uh, Cyberstorm should try to focus some units down, because otherwise he's going he's gonna to spray his shots, and it's going to be quite sporadic here. He's going to go for another harvester. There goes the upgrade. Will the shard launchers come into effect? No, not no. They're not going to come into effect in time. But he is going to be able to nab another harvester. But I mean, Raider's got so many harvesters, it's not really going to hurt him that much. I mean, trading these units was it worth? I mean, he killed a lot of predator tanks as well. The predator tank numbers are not where Raider wants them to be. They are pretty. I mean, they have good number at the moment. They need railguns, and he is going for an upgrade. But it's only just started, so railguns extremely long time. Four thousand dollars a minute and a half. I mean, even longer if you run out of money, because obviously the upgrade stops then, and uh, you need to wait till you get more money. Shard launches is done, and these Predator tanks, I think Raider really needs to wait. He's got him, I mean, he's got enough Predator tanks here. Uh, it would be nice if these guys are on line formation, but uh, yeah, look at that. He's going to split up, and he's going to focus these tanks down. These Predators actually fall quite quickly, because you don't, you don't really see Seeger tanks trying to take Predator tanks on in this kind of fashion, but the Seeger tanks have both their upgrades, and they're actually shredding through a lot of those Predator tanks. Fire out. You don't see, like I said, you don't see engagements like this very often. Finally, some harvesters going to the Blue Tiberian field. But, oh man, that was a little late by both sides, or at least uh, by Cyber. I thought Raider would have attempted it as well. It's very popular. And now he's just moving his Seekers in. He does, oh, he's bringing them in range of the, the tanks at the back, and that's going to allow the Force Multiply here for Raider to take control. And he might even get that Harvester, although he's not going for all oh, phase off of the Harvester, full of Blue Tiberium. He's going to enjoy that. Even that Seeker tank copped the phase as well. So he, he's actually going to get out of there. I thought Raider would be able to level all of these Seeker tanks, but he tried to get the Harvester. Phase went off, Retreat went in, and here come the Harvesters for Raider, pulling in all that blue tip. This is just so valuable. So valuable. Oh man, this is going to be even worse. They're both at the center field as well, so they're both mass equing all-out Seekers from Cyberstorm, all-out Preds from, uh, from uh, what do you call it, Raider. So it, it, it's going to be tough. I mean, Sonic Emitters is really going to help him, but if, if this is a Storm column, no, it's not. It's going to be a... Oh, that's right. He's got a uh, shard launch on his photon cannons. I'm not sure why he placed it all the way back there, but yeah, these Seeker tanks are going to come up here, and that's going to save him, uh, save his drone platform, which is taking a little bit of fire. I can see a Sonic Emitter being queued. It's a long way away, though, and it looks like uh, is he queuing a storm column? I'd like him to get just one storm column at least, and then he can put lots of these shard launches around. Because just having one storm column with the Iron Storm as well, it's just really valuable. As long as he doesn't lose it, we have some uh, Mammoth tanks here as well. I'm assuming Railguns is going to kick in very soon. And these Seeker tanks, oh, there they go. Oh, just in time, and the Sonic Emitter. These Seeker tanks, even with the shields, they just don't have it in them and are repairing the drone platform with an assimilator. Nice work there, but he drops the Sonic Emitter very quickly, but he's really running out. These, these Mammoth tanks, the damage output against things like Seekers is just so massive. They're just like one-shotting them just about. Look at them, they're even running in and crushing. The front Mammoth, though, will be focused down there, and the Mammoth back here is probably going to take a, a hit as well. The good thing, I mean, the one good thing about Mammoths, I guess, is that because they're not epic units, they're not as susceptible to Emp because obviously there's more than one of them. But uh, and uh, with railguns, the predator tanks also benefit. Big sell off there. Looks like uh, Cyberstorm's going to be doing pretty well over here. There is a storm column over here. Guns on the harvesters shooting at Cyber's harvesters, but I don't think it's going to be able to kill it there. Mighty Spike may be able to work it down. That one mammoth tank. Oh, is that is that a third mammoth tank? I think it is a third mammoth tank because it wasn't even damaged. I don't think. And uh, I think Cyber needs to put some economy down here because you can see he called in Ike or Seed. I can see it back there. He's going for the bottom spikes as well. And the blue field is all gone, so they're going to be funding pretty hardcore. 
on this blue tip, but it expected to run out very soon. Another Mammoth Tank goes down. He needs some uh, something to do to get rid of those uh, Disintegrators, which are elite. That's really going to help him, but he's getting the Shard Tech up here now. He's got the he's still got a handful of uh, Mist Tanks, but yeah, Raider, he just doesn't have the forces on the ground anymore. Um, he got Railguns. He, he was forced into a lot of engagements before he got Railguns. I think he should have avoided the the uh, engagements as long as possible until he could get the Railguns because he actually lost a vast majority of his Predator tanks and uh, he didn't even kill as many uh, Seeker tanks I don't think. I mean the, the Mammoth tanks, those two Mammoth tanks that came in basically wiped out most of that force single-handedly. And uh, I'm going to take a quick, take another drink. Probably should switch my mic off when I do that. But it looks like now there is another Mammoth tank here and Raider, he's got no plans for expansion. I mean, no plans for a refinery at all. He's actually trying to leech, but he's got to watch out because this photon can. Oh, he probably could have taken out that harvester. I would have gone for that one, I reckon. And Cyberstorm hasn't even put any uh, units down here or any uh, economy down here. They're finally putting one down, but he's got to watch out because there's there's two predators and there's a mammoth tank there. And uh, he hasn't got much to stop it. He really should try to focus down that Sonic Emitter. Looks like Raider is he selling up. He's sold up a decent amount of his base. He's got a Sonic Emitter there he could sell. Uh, obviously fully focused there. Another Mammoth tank coming down here now. That Mammoth is at about half health. But the drone platform, if that goes down, Cyber's going to be in a lot of trouble. He's got one more defensive structure queued. What's it going to be? It is going to be a shard launcher or a shard photo cannon, but he's got no power. He has to power down the portal. And if he loses that portal, he can't build any infantry. He does have a gravity stabilizer, and he's actually got a growth accelerator there as well. Remember, they do they do generate money for Reapers, so I guess it is worth it. They are very, very lightly armored, though, so as long as it doesn't get shot at, it will be cost-effective eventually. Eventually, yes, they're like $1,500 or something, aren't they? I don't even know how much they are. They're over a 1000 I just guessed at 1500 But now these railgun units, so there's nothing here to stop them. There's no tripod, there's nothing in. Oh, Cyber has phased all of his harvesters. Nice work there. They're going to get away. The Mammoth Tanks could try and crush them. I'm pretty sure Mammoth Tanks can crush Screen Hard. Oh, I'm pretty sure, I, I think. I mean, Titans can't. Epic units can. And I think, oh man, the screen harvesters just float up there like their boss, yeah, it's like they float above the ground. And that one there's going to die, uh, for sure, that mammoth tank just finishing it off. But really, uh, I think Ra Raider needs to watch out, because I think Cyber's just going to pump out a portal. No, he does have a tripod over here. Because if he pumps out a portal, he could just get a disintegrated force to finish this up, because there's no anti infantry at all. And Raider finally putting down a refinery there, so pretty intense for the middle field. No one went for really any economy, they just try to force it away from one another and really all the I mean there was there was some in big engagements with the the predator tanks and the seeker tanks but really I'm, I'm struggling to see what they they spent their money on it just seems to it seems to be that they spent a lot of their money on economy and just got more and more and more of it and didn't have enough left for army by the time they exhausted the fields here and uh, nothing coming out of that gravity stabilizer there's one tripod here and it isn't charged though, it's got a shard or a photon cannon to help it out. We've got a veteran mammoth tank there, which is going to be very damaging indeed. He's going to want to destroy that pretty quickly. It's almost dead actually. But that one tripod turns around. Ooh, that hurts, that hurts. He needs to focus down these uh, damaged predator tanks. He should be able to get that one right there. And there you go. But there's another one here, so he's onto the three uh, uh, mammoth tanks. If you don't see this too often, probably would have gone for a marm normally. But I mean, uh, the, the thing is against Reaper, you know, they can disable it with their their shield and they can get an imp on it and, and it's really it's really yeah, really hard uh, what's happening over there nothing much harvest is getting shot at Raiders got the middle field all uh, down pat I don't think Cyber's gonna be able to hold on he doesn't seem to have anything left and he probably will be walked over here selling up uh, some of his structures over here. he's gonna lose his drone platform he's got one more structure queued what's it gonna be he drops it down he's actually going for a hexapod here so uh, uh, the Reaper 17 epic unit a little bit better than what uh, the Marv would be in this situation I think just because the Marv is super vulnerable to Amp and Tripods and stuff like that in one clicks whereas the Mammoth Tanks, yeah they're vulnerable to that as well but he's actually got two veteran ones here but uh, the thing is that you, know, you can just spam Preds and, and get Railguns and that's still really good against Reaper that's why I try to do it as Steel Talons, the problem is that Steel Talons just can't handle their one clicks very well where GDI has other options, they have like uh, Zone Heads which they can, the zone heads can just save the mammoth tanks like so much. And uh, the Hexpod is out, the drone platform is down, but Cyberstorm, he's got a gravity stabilizer. Is he going to stay in this game? I mean, as long as his Hexapod's alive, why wouldn't he stay in this game? Problem though, two veteran mammoth tanks, that's very deadly. They don't have adaptive armor, which means they are going to be vulnerable to any, some kind of amp. Marv finally coming out now for Raider. He's got the infantry here all ready to go. He's another zone trooper squad. He's probably working on it. Or maybe that's another engineer. He's actually got three engineer there. Or only two. I thought I saw three. That must have just been me. Maybe he's going to sell the Reclamator Hub when it comes out. No, he's still constructing units out of it here. And now he's fighting across with a lot of Mammoth Tanks. I don't think Cyberstorm, I think his X-Pod is going to go down in a flame or 
a hail of railgun uh, weaponry here which fires it uh, faster than the speed of sound or whatever. Railguns are a projectile, I guess they are. They actually rip apart the atoms in the air. That's why you can see that blue stream. They're ripping apart the atoms in the air. Shockwave goes off, phase goes off, and Raider's like, hey, I'm going to shoot at you anyway. He could just go around it and just destroy all the buildings. It doesn't really matter. This hexapod isn't going to win. Look at all the mammoth things here. This is actually becoming quite a little bit of a walkover now. Uh, interesting game here. And yeah, he's going to go for a crush, but I think he's just going to move his tanks away. There we go. He should move them in a reverse formation move so they don't like look, see the, how they're overlapping here. They're all overlapping one another. Uh, if you reverse formation move, they they uh, stay uh, uh, separated from one another. These guys need to move forward. And uh, that he that uh, hex pod is going to go down. As soon as it unfazes, it really has got no chance of surviving. This zone trooper squad's coming out all better and that's going to hurt him a lot. And there we go, unfazing, and he's probably going to go down pretty quickly. There we go, especially with the rear armor. The railguns do so much damage to rear armor. And I think that's going to be game for Cyberstorm. So that was a little bit of a walk over at the end there. But uh, the replay system, once again, is a little bit lacking. Stay tuned to my net for my next video. There we go, Cyber throwing it in. So that was a nice, that was strangely entertaining, and that was a good game to watch, especially with those Seeker Predator Wars. And uh, yeah, that was quite nice. Would have thought Raider would have waited as long as possible for our guns. He may have won that a little bit easier. And that would have been over perhaps a little bit sooner. Uh, Chronic probably needed, or Cyberstorm probably needed some more economy at the middle field. You can see there he was winning on resources, so... Uh, he was ahead, so he felt like he didn't need to get that field, and then Raider got it. I think Chronic got more of the uh, the blue field there, but I'm surprised with so many harvesters that no one attempted to get the blue field that early on, and they just had harvesters lining up. And I think perhaps that's the reason why they didn't have those big armies as I thought, as bigger armies as I thought they were, because um, their harvesters, a lot of them that they'd built, the extra ones, were just sitting around waiting to unload, so they weren't actually getting money any faster than they normally would. They just expended money. Uh, on these harvesters which were sitting around lining up so they probably should have done something about that no, don't mean to criticize and destroy them on that there uh, they obviously had eco on their minds and what do we got 148,878 to uh, Raider 139,527 to uh, Cyberstorm so it's very close less than 10 grand in a 16 minute game so that's not too bad considering that Cyber was a, 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 probably about the 8 minute mark you see he started to pull ahead Raider brought it back a little bit and then Cyber pulled away he's probably at his most at about the 11 minute mark here and uh, then of course uh, uh, Raider got the middle field and he managed to pull it right back, so very close there. Surprised uh, Chronic didn't transition or have something else going for him, unfortunately. But anyway, stay tuned to my channel. Very special video coming up uh, next on my channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, I'm Green Zero. I hope you enjoyed that match, and I'll see you all next time.